March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law and the governor's further orders after that time. The members of the commission present at this time are Leon um, Shreve, Barbara Brennesel, John Portnoy, Mike Fisher. Um, I don't know who Wellfleet Zoom One is, whether that's a member or not, but we have a quorum, so we'll go ahead. The first announcement is that Hillary um, Lemos sent me an email indicating she may be delayed because she had to go look at a site. So why don't we start um, with the open space land transfer, Bruce Herter, if you're ready. Sure. Thank you. So um, we're just looking at two articles now. We had a meeting yesterday and for some time had been um, struggling with whether to go forward with the um, with the land by Sewell's gutter and have decided not to do that. Bruce, um, would you specify which map and parcel you're not going ahead? Oh, I'm sorry, I don't have that one in front of me. Let me just grab it then. Well, it's map 28 and it's 234 and 235. Okay, thank you. Okay, but uh, the other two we'd like to move forward with. The, the first one is an article and I'll just read it to see if the town will vote to transfer care, custody, management and control of three lots of town owned land indicated below from the select board to the conservation commission for purposes of open space conservation or to do or act anything thereon. Um, and the first parcel is map 30, parcel 286 and it's a 2.06 acre wetlands, marsh property in Blackfish Creek, abutting conservation lands owned by the Wellfleet Conservation Trust and Mass Audubon Society uh, out near Route 6. Map 30188. Hold on. Let oh, me it's just... not 286, it's 186. I apologize. Okay, so it's. Typo that got by me. All right, that's a problem for us because with. Open meeting law, it has to be correctly listed. Otherwise, we cannot act on it. So do you want to come back to us next time on that particular? I have to get it in by, can I do the, the rest of it? And I'll, I'll leave Absolutely. that out. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. It's just, and if you want to come back to that, we can approve that. OK. As long as, as just at the next meeting. Denny? Right. Sure. Was that was that part of the stated announcement? I don't believe it was. I'm not understanding what you're saying. In your in your announcement of this meeting, I don't believe you identified the parcel numbers. We did. It's in the agenda. It's in the, oh, agenda. It's in the agenda. Okay, yeah. thank you. I didn't see it. Okay. So let me go on to the other two and then I will resubmit that one for a look later on and okay. um we can always Just pull that one, out if you have a problem with it later. But one question, Bruce. Yeah. So it's map thirty one eighty eight. It's more on one on map thirty six, isn't it? Both of these are on map thirty. Okay. Um, it's what I have. Let me just get the map I have. Sorry, because we, you know, we if we're going to transfer, we should get it right. I I find a lot. There's a corner of it unmarked on map thirty, but on one on map thirty six, it has most of it for the one eighty eight. Okay, we're not talking about one eighty eight now, as I understand it. We were saying that there was a problem with map thirty. It was listed as two eighty six, and it should be one eighty six. That's the one we're going to postpone, correct? Yes, correct. but this is the, the other one on map uh, that's listed there. Okay, map 30, parcel 188. Yeah, it's a minor thing, but I think it's more in map 36. Okay. Bruce, do you want to look at that one and get back to us on that one also? Okay. So let's uh, go on. We've got um, I, map I have it listed as map. 30 and but I will take a look at that too as long as I'm going to do the other one um, in fact 
Anyway. It, it may be mostly on the second map that Mike mentioned, but it is identified. And if you look at that second map, it'll be identified as 30 dash. Oh, okay. I stand corrected then. Okay. Oh, good, good. All right, so let's go forward with that. I will uh, send in the, the other one. And that's a 1.59 acre wetlands marsh in Blackfish Creek near the same Wellfleet Conservation Trust and Audubon Conservation Land. So these two are very close together. And I will resend in the 186. The third parcel that's a part of this article is map 42, parcel 137. And that is a 3.26 acres of wetlands marsh that abuts the town owned Bayberry Hill conservation land and trail property off Lieutenant Island Road. So for those who know the trail over there, as you go down the trail and you hit the marsh, there's a thin area that's right at the bottom of that marsh. The, all of these are uh, entirely marshlands. Um, and um, so that's article, uh, the first article, and I will uh, resend in, resubmit Map 30, parcel 186. Okay, so would you like us to vote now on map 30, parcel 188, and map 32, map 42, parcel 137? That would be great. Okay. Could I have a motion, please? So move, Barbara. Is there a second? I'll second, second Leon. Okay, Leon seconded. And I need a voice vote. Leon, how do you vote? Yes. Barbara? Yes. John Portnoy? Yes. Ben Fairbank? Yes. Mike Fisher? To recuse. Okay. And Debbie Freeman, yes. So you're all set on that one. Okay. The, the second article, there are uh, three pieces. And I'll just read it again to see if the town will vote to transfer care custody management and control of three properties shown on assessor's map 28, parcels 80, 82, and 239 for purposes of open space conservation or to do or act anything thereon. All these are properties just south of Indian Neck, the Indian Neck Beach parking area at the end of Nauset Road. All parcels are within areas of critical environmental concern contain areas of NAGSP estimated habitats of where rare, excuse me, wildlife and are within the FEMA flood zone. Parcel 82 is a 4.73 area beach and dune property on the west side of Nauset Road and lies between town conservation land to the south and wealthy conservation trust property to the north. Parcel 80 is a 9.64 acre property, 8.43 upland and 1.21 lowlands on the east side of Nauset Road and abuts the Chipman's Cove Marsh on the east. And parcel 239 is a 12.56 acre tidal flats and marsh lot in Chipman's Cove to the east of parcel 80. Does anybody have any questions about these parcels? Would someone like to make a motion? I move that we accept these parcels. Is there a second? Barbara, yes. Okay, I need a voice vote. Leon? Yes. Barbara? Yes. John Portnoy? Yes. Ben? Yes. Mike Fisher? Recuse. And Debbie Freeman, yes. So Bruce, you're all set on those two articles, except for resubmitting the um, proper heading uh, for 186 instead of 286. So okay. that, can, can I include that in the same article? In other words, can I- I don't see why back not. In with it? Okay. I don't see why not. Okay, thank you very much. Is there anything else we need to do for you? <clears throat> no, I think we're okay. set. Thank you. All right, then the next item is the vessel report, Barbara. Yes, I was hoping that Hillary would be able to put up the um, suggested changes to the regulations so we could vote on them. 
So Sorry? would you like us to wait till Hillary is here? I think so, because I don't have them on this computer that I'm using to Zoom, so I can't um, share my screen. All right, the next is the draft Wellfleet Environmental Protection Regulations. Is anyone here for that? I think we were just going to discuss uh, our initial read of those uh, and, and discuss how we thought that was going. Okay, do you want to start? Um, I, I, I actually like the direction that these were going, especially how they addressed the buffer zone issue and how many, much square footage could be in the buffer zone. So, uh, I, I mean, I think it's a good direction. I, I read it like three weeks ago to prepare for the last meeting, which, which we didn't discuss it, but um, appreciate any other comments from commission members. Um, John Portnoy? Yeah, I, um, <clears throat> I thought it was very well, well, well written. It was, it was actually kind of a pleasure to read, um, but I had lots of comments. I have lots of comments and suggestions, and I don't know the best way to do this because if we don't, we're not going to have a substantive discussion today, especially without Horsley Witten staff here. And I'm not sure I'm going to be at the next meeting. Maybe I'll just, I put all my comments in on a Word document in track, track, in, uh, track changes so I can forward that to you all. But um, yeah, in general, I think it's, it's really well done and they've um, taken our concerns about climate, climate change um, effects on our on our regulations very seriously. So it's a, it's a good, a really good start. <clears throat> right, I have some comments too and questions. I think we need to meet with them to, like we did with APCC to go through uh, our feedback to their suggestions. So we probably need a working group meeting um, to sit with them and go over it rather yes. than doing it in a business meeting. I think so. Yeah. Okay, I think so. Is anyone opposed to proceeding like that? Barbara, could I just make a comment? Sure. Um, I, because I don't want it to get lost. It occurred to me today as we were looking at doing site visits that, and I'm not sure if this is in the proposal, but it does seem to me the 50 foot buffer zone really limits us more than we should be limited. Um, it would be nice if we could have a hundred foot buffer zone with some flexibility within that to make some exceptions. Yeah, yeah Hor uh, Horse and Witten defines other areas. They don't refer to it as the buffer zone. Buffer zone, they refer to it a different way, which I like. So we, we should study this and then have a meeting with them. Right. With right. Our questions. John, and one of the issues they, they highlighted was whether or not we wanted to change the particular numerical lines um, that we right. conduct ourselves under now. So that's something we can certainly discuss at a working session. Ben, right. did you have comments? Uh, no, not at this time. Um, Mike Fisher? No, I sent in uh, some typos and a few suggestions to them. Hillary, I think, forwarded it to the Horsley Witten. There was one question I had in uh, it's just uh, a reconciling uh, under 105 procedures under filing requirements it says for RDAs and NOIs and everything else that the list of the abutters has to be submitted and I didn't think the form doesn't call for that but we probably want to make sure that the forms and the regulations uh, are in accord. Yeah I think <laughs> That level of detail is something that we should probably talk about in a working session. Hillary, we're talking about trying to schedule a working session with Hall, Horsley and Witten um, outside of a business meeting so that we can go over and, and discuss the draft. Okay, so I had um, spoken with them and I thought you guys would discuss this at least tw twice before we called them in just so we could all get on the same page with comments. Um, so I had scheduled them for February 17th at the business meeting. I can ask them to come an hour early or we can pick a, a whole different day, whatever you prefer. 
Well, it might be worthwhile for us to just talk about it before we meet with them so that we're all on the same page. That's why I had so. given us two meetings to do that. Okay. Does, but, but does this have to be during the business meeting or we could, could we? No, have we a, could do it whenever. It makes no a difference. A work session just for this. Yeah. Go through it page by page and yeah. come up with one edited instead of Mike sending in his and I'm sending in mine, send in one uniform document. Yeah, no. So that's good. If we could do that before the 17th and then, I mean, does that seem possible? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Probably. How much more blood do you want to extract from us, Hillary? <laughs> Jeez, I don't know. Do you want to, if you guys want to take the COVID calls, I'm happy to do a bulk of the conservation no. work. I'll gladly trade tasks. No, that, that's true. You, you've got a big burden here. But um, I think we can meet for an hour and just hash through this and everyone just read it first. Write your comments on it. And then yeah. we just have someone making all the comments on one document and I, I nominate Mike because he's really good at this, Michael Fisher, uh, but we can debate about that later. So what day do we want to look at? Who's Whatever day you have. Yeah, a doodle poll or I don't know what you want to do, but. Let me see. I mean, we That's have, it. it's three o'clock on our, before our February meeting. It'll give us an hour. Um, and we could move it some into the business meeting, but that we, we, I mean, I can't speak for everyone else, but you, that's usually if you've got a four o'clock meeting, most of us are free at three o'clock. The only problem is on that February 3rd, we're going to try to have the executive session with the board of selectmen. And I would right. hate to have us. Oh, let's yeah, forget yeah, that. Forget yeah. that. On the 17th. Too. All right. Forget that. Let's do it some other time. Do we want to look at Tuesday, February 2nd or January 26th, Tuesday? Either one is fine with me. Me too. You want to do a doodle poll? I don't have my calendar here. Yep, that's fine. Okay. Okay. Does anyone else have any initial comments that they'd like to make regarding the regulations? Okay. Hillary, do you have a report or mail or discussion that we need to have today? Uh, Debbie, just for one quick before. Sure. Hillary, could you drop a, another hard copy of the report in the drop the pickup box for me to get? Yep. Does anybody else want a hard copy? Because I don't, I don't do well no. if you're on the computer. Okay. I can't print it out. Okay. Um, no, I don't have much to report. We just went out and looked at um, the tree cutting that John had wrote in about, and um, we'll be sending them a letter and stay tuned on that one. That was actually a violation. Yes, of course. Well, I didn't think I didn't... you could send us out for a non-violation. No, no, I, did, I didn't see it myself. It was reported <laughs> okay. by a neighbor. Yes, it was an actual violation. So um, what's the location on that, Hillary? 40 Ridgeview. Okay. All right. We postponed the vessel report because Barbara wanted um, your ability to share your screen. Okay. So shall we jump to that? Yes, let me pull it up. Just wanna make sure I have the latest and greatest. All right, let's see. I have a vessel folder. Last Friday, I think I sent it. Yeah, I just have to see if I put it in my boat floats and raft. Uh, not 1215. No. Nope. Uh, today is 120. All right. Oh, that's the harbor. Oh, here we go. Okay, and I know I have to delete the last sentence or something. Right, right. Okay, hold on one moment. Sharing screen, off we go. All right. So these are suggested um, 
changes to our vessel regulations, the first of which is in 1.04 definitions in small vessels to eliminate without a motor. Any discussion about that? Yes, Debbie, may I speak? Yes, please. Yeah, so I agree that this is, this is very much something we wanted to do because you don't want to have someone just put a motor on a dinghy and then claim that it's exempt from this. At the same time, there must have been some legal reason why without a motor was in the definitions in the first place, whether that puts it out of the small vessel category or not. So that's something uh, Horsley Witten could perhaps tell us about, but I think it's a good idea if it's legally possible. Okay. <clears throat> and then the uh, other change is um, in section one, it's one one. I think these will have to be renumbered at some point, but it, there's a section about on private property, which was not in the former regulations. So that's a new section um, that wasn't in the previous. And then the other new thing was Old Wharf Point it said the site was owned by Wealthy Conservation Trust, but we added and managed by Wealthy Conservation Trust. And those were the, the major changes. So it's private property, uh, 100 out of the 100 foot buffer zone, unless they are on permitted structures or not on grass, et cetera, you can read it for yourself. So these were the suggested changes to the, to the regulations. May I, may I ask about Old Wharf Point? I thought you were going to delete that from that section. Well, I didn't get a definitive answer from you, Denny. So it just says oh, yeah, the yeah. following locations are approved. It doesn't say they're town managed. So um, whatever you want. Uh, it's whatever you think is more appropriate. If you want to just go off on your own with Old Wharf Point, I mean, that's, that's an issue. But... Um, well, we've been there for a number of years. So that's a, a point for discussion. It doesn't matter to, I don't think we discussed it as a subcommittee. It's just, I put manage so that it wouldn't be a town managed property. I don't, I don't think you need it, uh, but if you want to keep it on there, you may. Uh, how do the other folks feel about that? I think we should leave it on there because it shows that the area has permission to store boats. So we don't get questions about, well, why are there boats being stored here? Or, you know, I just think it could cut down on some confusion. Right. It's approved for vessel storage. It doesn't say that the town is managing it. It's just approved. Yeah. That's fine. And there may be other areas that come up like that. I've been talking to Melissa Lowe at the Audubon. Mm -hmm. And they're considering what they're going to do um, on Audubon property by the boathouse there. And it may be a similar thing. I think she's been talking to you too, Denny. So uh, she may have some kind of solution when she talks to her homeowners association and other um, Massachusetts Audubon sanctuaries that also have these kind of issues with uh, how they manage their properties. Barbara, would you consider holding off on these and submitting them to Horsley Witten when we do our comments on um, the regulations? The reason being, if we're going to be changing the issue of the 100 foot buffer, we'd be passing these for a little while only to change it later on. And it seems like these comments would go very neatly with what we're, we're giving to Horsley and Witten for the whole regulatory scheme. Okay, I understand that, but um, spring is not too far uh, away, I hope. <laughs> and if this is gonna happen, we need to get, we have a AmeriCorps person who's willing to do some education, some brochures. We have to get the word out to community associations, the word out to, Suzanne said she's willing to put a a brochure in with the beach stickers. So if we wait for Horsley Witten, I think we're going to miss this whole season okay. in terms, even with signage, for example. We'll right. miss it. I see there are two hands up from the audience. Ryan Curley. Um, yes, um, thank you. And this is something that I only became aware of today. Not, not the small vessel work, but um, 
It has to do with open meeting law. Um, so the select board um, is trying to invest or is is doing an investigation into town finances. Um, and I just spoke with the attorney of the day to make sure that however we do it, we do it with, while staying in compliance with open meeting law. Um, and the attorney of the day said that if a public body designates more than one person to form a subcommittee, that subcommittee is also subject to open meeting law. Um, and I do not think that any of the meetings of the vessel subcommittee were open public meetings. Is that correct? That is correct. We were uh, three people who met in my backyard. Uh, we were under the impression that if we didn't have a quorum, that we could have a discussion. So that's, that's what our hope was as a select board. Um, but um, the, the determination from open meeting or from the division of open government is that subcommittees are also subject to a subcommittee of even of more than one person. So if, if it's two people um, that have been designated to work on something that that is a public body and subject to open meeting law, um, which makes these recommendations as they are currently problematic. Well, it's not that the regulations are problematic, it's the process. Yeah, the process. If, if yes. the regulations are presented now and everything is reopened, I don't see a problem. Okay, um, is there any, Suzanne, you had a comment? I do, but it's just um, word processing. Under the list of the following locations are approved for small vessel storage. Would it make sense to break out Old Wharf Point, specifically owned and managed by the Wellfleet Conservation Trust and then list the other locations as um, managed by the town of Wellfleet? So people understand there's a difference. That makes sense, Suzanne. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, my, that, that's an easy fix. That's a, okay. I, yeah. Yeah. I spend my life explaining things to people. So <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank you. Yes. Barbara, given the issue with the subcommittee, I think the smartest thing we could do would be to publish this as part of a business meeting and present it in whole again one more time yes you know the select board has documents that they append to their agenda to look at and i think that might be some some way to do this too so that people can see this i'll fix what suzanne said because i think that makes a lot of sense but um if we could append this to the minutes as you know so people can look at it before the meeting i think that would be a, a very good thing to do. We can do that. So I'll, I'll fix the type, the, you know, that, that suggestion and send it back to Hillary. And then when we post our next business meeting, it could be one of the documents that accompanies the meeting. And oh. if, for example, a Bruce's thing, that could be another thing. I was thinking of that because I didn't have a map. And if I were um, just a person listening to the meeting, I wouldn't know what properties he was talking about. So I think anything like that to add to this, since we can't be in a room and look at documents is very helpful, even though it might be a pain in the neck to do. I think it's useful. Um, the other issue is that this affects common landings. Is that correct? Some of them? Um, they're town landings, except for Old Wharf Point. Yeah, so these are common landings, which is a specific term um, in Massachusetts general law. Um, and there's actually a process that has to be followed um, when any changes to uh, regulations governing common landings is approached. All right, um, there, there would be no changes here, Ryan. This is what we currently do. There are no changes proposed here. Okay. 
all of these landings are currently um, managed by the town except for Old Wharf Point. So I just yeah. have to separate that out and, you know, it's not a town landing. So we're not really changing anything here. So just be aware that if there are any changes, it does have to get posted into a newspaper record. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Um, I, I know you're concerned about yeah. some other landings and some other vessel racks, but those are not town um, properties. One is um, Field Point, which is a state property. And the other is at the end of Omaha, which I'm not really sure who's managed. I think it's town managed, but the rack is washed away. So, um, but these on this regulation are currently still in existence and have always been. And it does get um, posted in a public newspaper when we hold the hearing. So it does get posted. Okay, thank you. All right, so Barbara. Um, one more time. <laughs> one more time. The fifth, the fifth time's the charm, I guess. <laughs> no one will be able to say we didn't talk about it publicly. Right, exactly. <laughs> so Hillary, for that working session we were talking about. Yes. That better be posted as a working session. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Yeah. We got to right. first find the date. All right. Right. Okay. So the, the FEMA floodplain bylaw, is there anyone here to talk about that? No, I had sent that around to you. Um, <clears throat> the idea is that we need to get that approved at town meeting, but that falls under the building inspector's jurisdiction. And so he has to work with the planning board um, to go ahead and move those regulations along. I just wanted you to see them, have a read through them. And I think if I recall, I sent them to Horsley Witten or I sent our draft of our regulations to um, Shannon, the county floodplain specialist to make sure they don't, um, have any conflicting things in them. So um, to make sure they're consistent. So that is all moving along. Um, I don't think, like I said to Paul, I don't think we have enough time to do the floodplain um, bylaw at this town meeting. So my guess is that'll go to a future town meeting, but coming soon. Okay. Um, Hillary, are there jurisdictional opinions for tonight? No, there was one that came in late. Um, and I didn't have a chance to look at it, but it's um, removal of one black locust at 96 feet from the top of the coastal bank and pruning of one pine. Oh, maybe we could do this. Located approximately 99 feet from the top of the bank. Pruning is to consist of reducing the crown uh, Reducing the crown height by three to four feet, planting of five three gallon northern bayberry will be done around the stump of the black locust. All measurements have been verified using the plan approved by the Conservation Commission on 6-1709 for the Yacht Club. Um, I'm not in favor of um, crowning. Stopping. Stopping, whatever you want to call it. Has anyone made a side visit to this? No, it's the Jaquesset Yacht and Country Club. Um, I think we can postpone that. And yeah, okay. yeah. Maybe Doug can go out there and take a yeah, look. Yeah, for sure. Like I said, it just came in today. So yeah, okay. And we can take a look too. Yeah. Danny, did you have your hand up? I did. Uh, are Are you going to talk about the Herring River Overlook map that we talked about? Ah. Oh. Oh. I Yes. Sorry, that would be the other one. Let me pull it up for us here. From Denny. Okay. I just want to open up both of these. Okay, and share my screen. We have one more jurisdictional opinion from the Wellfleet Conservation Trust. And I think I'm going to show the map, Denny, and let you walk us through. Well, that's fine. Okay. Everybody see that? 
Uh, yeah, let me. Here's Chiquesset Neck Road. Right. Here's Herring River. Up just a little bit. How's yeah, that? that? That's good. I didn't know if you were going to go out there. Uh, I'm happy to take anybody out there. We're we're ready to start some trail work and all that. I think most of it's outside of your jurisdictional areas, but I told Hillary I'd put it all in so that uh, we could talk about it. There is a small wetland uh, that Hillary was just circling. Uh, that's about a quarter of an acre. Uh, and actually the wet part of it is even smaller, but uh, we're proposing to put a single track uh, trail uh, throughout this area. Uh, and so we, uh, we needed to know if we need your permission. Uh, and the other thing is uh, we put a line on here, the heavy blue line up at the north end is the 200 foot river buffer. I couldn't find those in your regulations, but I put it on there anyhow. So as I say, I'm happy to take somebody out, uh, anybody out anytime. Uh, there are some flags um, and uh, so questions. Yeah, I think, I think I've tromped through that. There's a lot of poison ivy. So clearing that would be a, a good no. thing. No, I'm, I'm not familiar with where the poison ivy is, Barbara. Oh, you'll find it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, um, as I say, I'm not familiar. We're, we've looked there. We use that. It's not an established trail, but we've tromped there looking for terrapins in the river with our binoculars. So we, we I don't, go, we don't I go down to the bottom. We don't go down to the bottom of the hill. Oh, you don't. Okay. Right. Yeah. All right. And that, that's, that's in the brown a... area here, the bottom of the hill, the brown area. Yeah, that's National Park Service. And okay. it is at the, you can see the topo on the map. Is this uh, Jackie Faust's donation? Yes. Okay. Okay. John Portnoy. Question about the uh, where the trail goes by that little vernal pool. Does it, um, it's been years since I've been down there. But isn't there a shrub border around that? And will the trail disturb the shrub border around the pool at all? Uh, number one, it's not a vernal pool. Uh, and number two, we're not intending to disturb any of the shrubbery around the wetland area. So Denny, okay. well, explain to us exactly what you will do to create the trails. What will the surface be? What will you prune or remove? How will you mark your trails? It'll be essentially like what you have at the uh, Pilgrim Springs area and the other trails in town uh, with arrows and all that. The, the parking area we're gonna make for two cars. We haven't decided on the design of that yet, but, uh, but otherwise it'll be a single track path, uh, as I say, like is around the rest of town. Is that approximately 18 to 36 inches wide? Yeah, I, I, I hate to, at, at times it'll be wider than that because of the vegetation, but otherwise I, I wouldn't want to go to 18, Debbie. Uh, okay, will you be removing branches? Yes, and I, I would ask you why, uh, well, I would ask you where your jurisdiction is. Right by the pond, the, by the wetlands area, that's what I'm talking about. Okay, uh, that's fine. We will have it as narrow as we can, uh, but we, and I would anticipate that a few branches might come off, uh, but uh, there, is, there is a path out there right now, which is passable. Does anyone want to walk the site with Denny? I certainly would like to. Yes. Yes, yep. Tell me when. Yeah, I, I, I think I would approve this. I would just like to walk it first, just to make sure there aren't any issues. I would like to see it too before approving it, but I think it's great. Um, so what is convenient for people? Um, you know, our February 3rd agenda, we have one case on there right now. I think you could do it um, during site visits on February 3rd, because the only thing on the agenda for that meeting is um, 
a visit to Mid Cape for an extension to an order of conditions and the deadline for that meeting has come and gone. So I think if that's agreeable to Denny, that's two weeks out. That would be fine. Okay. To, so, but, the trail, the trail, it'll take half an hour to 45 minutes to walk the whole trail. Right. If you just want to do the wetland area, that's less. I don't think it matters. You'll, you'll miss, you'll, you'll miss uh, the like, views. I'd like to do the trail. I yeah. would too. But people could right. bail out. We could start at the wetland <laughs> and whoever wants to go back and go back. And those of us who want to continue can continue. All right, so we'll put it on for side right. visits on that day, if that's acceptable. What, Good idea. What time, what time of day do you do that? Um, February 3rd, 10 o'clock. We'll, we'll go to you first. So we'll be there about 10.05. All right. Uh, Unless we just meet there at 10 o'clock, which they might not, well, yes, we'll do that. Should we, where should we meet? At the Jaquesset Neck parking lot? No. No, you're going to have to uh, meet out in the area. Uh, I've been generally parking around the corner uh, behind the number three green. Uh, and Hillary, if you go up a little bit, other way up. See where the, the odd shaped triangle is there down, down below? There? Yes, right in there. As you come around Chequesset Neck Road uh, and the number three green and number four tee off is off there, there's some parking area there and we could park up close to where the P is too. Okay. We'll find it. We'll find you, Danny. Okay. Okay, thanks. Anything further on that? Any other questions? All right, so we'll see you on February 3rd at around 10 o'clock. Okay, I'll be there. All right. Is there anything else that we need to cover in the business meeting portion of tonight? Minutes? Uh, do we want to just make a comment that the Robinson property was withdrawn because we were going to hear that tonight and that the Miller property um, on First Ave was continued indefinitely and that Blash was continued to February 3rd or Holland Trust was continued to um, February 3rd as well. What about Lackner? Wasn't that continuing? No. Lackner. No, we have a packet for tonight, today. I thought she Lackner. wrote something in that. Where is she? Maybe I'm mistaken. You wanted to talk He's about- He's asking us to talk. extend it. Right. I, I thought she was asking for another continuance, but maybe a continuance be delayed until February. Okay. Oh. Well, we'll have to vote on that continuing we those at the meetings. Yes. No, no, I was just trying to advise people of the schedule, what's ahead. Oh, right, in case anybody's um, tuned into this meeting and are waiting for something to happen. Yeah, and perhaps at five o'clock, we might wanna just go back through that again so mm -hmm. that um, people that are on the line are aware. Yeah, so you, you wanted to cover what, Hillary? Um, I think we wanna take a look at the submittals from the Woods Hole Group for our peer review um, and see if you guys are in agreement that that consultant seems acceptable, the proposals seem acceptable, um, and then we could vote to accept those and get those projects moving along. Um, John Portnoy had asked a question that I had sent to Adam. Um, and he responded. So John, I don't know, I put the response up here um, about task one and we can just take a quick read on this and see if this is agreeable. We have three peer reviews before us for the Bowinger property, the Michelson property and the Simone property. Um, Woods Hole Group weighed in on all with three separate proposals um, that you all should have.
And I'm not sure who's, I'm just gonna pop out my viewing grid here to see if anyone from Coastal had joined us. Um, I sent the proposals to Coastal as well. Um, and Bob Berenger just to have a look at. So I don't know if they have any comments. Looks like Charlie's here and Erica's here. So if the commission wants to weigh in first on the proposals, then we can hear from the audience members. How do I get rid of this? I can. Um, I'll go. I thought the proposals were fine and that we should go ahead. Okay. Does anyone else have comments on the proposals? Well, I just have to admit, I was a little confused because John had a comment about one of the, is this the one where there was a one issue that wasn't addressed? Yes, about okay. the alternative analysis. Yeah. Yeah, so the response is on the screen, Barbara. All right, let me read it then, sorry. Yeah. All right, that looks good to me. Would that be spelled out in the proposal? Should they revise the proposal so it's clearer? Um, we can we can have this email with it so it's clear. They're working for us, so okay, if it's clear to us, and we understand what we're getting. Then I think we're good. Does anyone else have any comments on the uh, peer review proposals? Hillary, do we need a motion to accept? Yes, for please. For each, for each yes. one separately? Yes. yes, please. Is this very okay. time sensitive? I think yes. It is. Yes, so we should do this. Okay. So I move that we accept the, um, what is it, the Woods Hole Group um, peer review proposal? Peer review proposal. Okay, but we need to, we'll need to do it three times. So the first one for Michelson. All right, for Michelson. <laughs> is there a second? Second. Okay. We need a voice vote. Leon? Yes. John Portnoy? Yes. Barbara? Yes. Ben? Yes. John Cumbler? Yes. Mike Fisher? Yes. All right, then I need a motion on the second proposal and the name attached to that proposal, Hillary? Simone? Okay. I, I move, move that we accept the proposal for Simone. Second, second Barbara? Yes. I need a voice vote. Leon? Yes. John Portnoy? Yes. Barbara? Yes. Ben? Yes. John Cumbler? Yes. Mike Fisher? Yes. Debbie Freeman? Yes. And the third, could we have the name for that one, please, Hillary? Bowinger, Robert Bowinger. Could I have a motion for the peer review proposal for Bo Beringer? Uh, so moved, Barbara. Is there a second? Leon, yeah, second, John Cumbler. Okay, and I need a voice vote. Michael, how do you vote? Yes. Ben? Yes. Barbara? Yes. Leon? Yes. John Cumbler? Yes. John Portnoy? Yes. And Debbie Freeman? Yes. So we're all set on those, Hillary. Thank you. Um, I don't know if we wanted to, did the audience want to speak or they were okay? That would be Charlie or Erica. <laughs> Uh, Charlie Agro here with Coastal Engineering. Uh, I had no comments with those proposals, so I have no issues with anything. Great, thank you. All right, then is there anything further, Hillary, that we need to address in the business meeting? Minutes. Oh, thank you, Barbara, I keep forgetting that. <laughs> Which minutes um, are we talking about? The minutes of January 3rd? Yes. January, no, January 6th. Six. 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 Last meeting. January 6th. Which John edited. Okay. So could I have a motion to accept the edited minutes of January 6th, 2021? So moved. so moved. Is there a second? 
I don't know if I moved it, but if I didn't, I'll second it. <laughs> we'll say John Portnoy moved it and Barbara seconded it. Okay. You have voice vote. John Portnoy? Yes. Leon? Yes. Barbara? Yes. Ben? Yes. John Cumbler? Yes. Mike Fisher? Yes. Debbie Freeman? Yes. So that's all set. Did I miss the discussion on the open space committee land transfer business? Yes, yes you did. did. Um, they have to resubmit map 30 parcel 186. Unfortunately, it was written 286, so we can't go ahead with that. Otherwise, we approved the articles for map 28, map 30, and map 42. No, De uh, Deborah, I think they were withdrew the one at the end of- uh, Right. Yes. You're absolutely right. I'm sorry. Thank you very much. Yeah. They withdrew um, map 30, parcel 188? No. Oh, that's no, that's the correction. The map 28, parcels 234 and 235. I'm sorry. Right. Yeah. Okay, so map, that one's gone. Yeah. Right. We voted to support the land transfer of map 28, parcel 80, 82, and 239. Correct. We have to hear again, map 30, parcel 186. Yes. Mm -hmm. What about yeah. map 30, parcel 188? We voted to accept oh, Yes, that. that's good. Okay, and map 42 is good? Yes. Yes. Okay. While we're talking about this, I was trying to get in the whole time you had that discussion and it just kept saying, your host is waiting to let you in. Was there a problem that I wasn't in? Sometimes your host doesn't see you waiting because they're busy taking meeting minutes or looking at a folder. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. I mean, I, I, I care about this issue and I was a little upset I missed it, so. But I probably couldn't vote on it since I'm on the open space committee. Right. 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 Um, John, on a separate matter, you have been missing wastewater committee meetings. Do you know that? Um, I just missed the last one because it was in okay. conflict with physical. Okay. But I, I just want to make sure you're, you're getting the notifications. That's all. Well, I'm not getting the notifications directly, but I see when other people respond, I can track down from their responses. Uh, you should be getting them directly if you're on that committee. I'm not, yeah. but. Yeah, I think you need to give them a good email address that you can well, check, yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll try to get that taken care of. Okay. But I, I, I was at the ones before that. I, I don't yeah, know. I, I just, I hadn't seen you at the last two, so I well, just. I was at the one, bef I don't know if you missed me. I was at the one before, I missed <laughs> yesterday, or yesterday. Was it yesterday? Or yesterday, yeah. I missed uh, yesterday because of a conflict. Okay. As long as you knew, I just want to make sure you knew about it. That's all. Right. Okay. Anything serious happen? No. <laughs> they all right. talk more about the barriers and the sawdust. Yep. Thing. Yep. No. And 95 Lawrence Road and. And then they talked about the strategies. The typical oyster that's going to reduce all the nitrogen in our water. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a magical oyster. Right. I have great I faith it. in the magical oyster. Yeah, it's mystic, magical. Right. We have a new president now. We don't do magical. Right. <laughs> anything else that we need to cover? Nancy Chavetta has her hand up. No, I was I was just clapping at the mystical, magical oyster. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Can I no. request a five minute break before we go into? Yeah, yeah, please. <laughs> So why don't we adjourn the business meeting? We need a motion and then we'll come back for so the moved. public hearings. All right, a second. Barbara. Second, Michael. Okay, Leon. Yes. John Portnoy. Yes. Barbara. Yes. Ben. Yes. John Cumbler. Yes. Mike Fisher. Yes. Debbie, yes. So we are adjourned. For five minutes, okay. Very good. <laughs> Twentieth, two thousand and twenty one, Town of Wellfleet Conservation Commission.
These are being held pursuant to Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 30A, Sections 18 to 25, as amended by Chapter 28 of the Acts of 2009, the Wetlands Protection Act, the Wellfleet Environmental Protection Bylaw, and its regulations. Additionally, we are holding this meeting remotely pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law and his subsequent orders. Um, the first matter we have tonight is Lackner, 66 Hiawatha Road, Map 28, Parcel 178, an RDA to upgrade the pathway. Um, Ms. Lackner, do you want to unmute mute yourself? Hi. Hi. Now, I was unsure looking at your paperwork whether you wanted to go ahead tonight or you were requesting another continuance. No, I, I just didn't know whether I needed the three weeks advance notice. I wasn't clear on that. Um, so that's why I asked the question. So I'm fine to go ahead with this today. Why yeah. don't you go ahead? Okay. Um, so at the last meeting, as I understood, it was suggested since I had raised the subject that I, um, well, let's see, two things. One is that I reduced the amount of impervious surface um, you know, on the path, on the proposed pathway. And the second was that since eventually I would like to um, improve the driveway since the erosion has caused tree roots to be exposed. And um, I've tripped over them a couple of times um, that I add that into this application um, and just do them both at the same time. Um, so I prepared, um, you know, the documentation, I revised the original application, which is what I thought I needed to do. Um, and in the uh, purpose and scope um, section of the work description number two, um, I, pro I provided a separate sheet <coughs> describing the project purpose and scope for both the pathway and the parking area. Um, no. Uh, and I am very much open to, um, you know, suggestions, conversations, you know, about all of this. Um, I uh, did some sketches. Uh, I, I, I have a, the package has a um, photograph of the existing condition, um, a sketch showing the proposed condition for the pathway. Um, a oh, sort of photo montage um, of somewhere probably in Arizona, uh, you know, using a similar um, uh, approach. I also went out and measured the parking area um, and to show a big question that I have because um, the actual travel light and with regard to the parking area, um, this is not urgent for me, and we could put this off if we wanted to, more needs to be resolved, but the travel lanes do not consume the entire um, right-of-way width. And um, most of the people, you know, or many of the people along Hiawatha Road park their cars in a portion of the right-of-way. And I know that when I park my car, the tail hangs out and part, one of the reasons that is, is because I was reluctant to destroy any more bearberry, um, which I t do tend carefully. So I did um, calculate the areas um, and then I provided an updated and hopefully more clear, um, uh, you know, site plan showing the 50 foot and 100 foot buffers with a pathway and parking. And because there was a, um, question about the delineation of the wetlands because it has this funny little peninsula. I took a photograph to show that little peninsula at a flood tide. And then there is um, the property location map. So I, I hope that I provided enough information um, to help the commission to help me figure out what to do. Okay. The let me just go first. Um, 
I would not like to see you doing any work off your property. I think you should be limited by your property. Um, and so that any work you propose off the property, I, I don't think is, is appropriate. No problem. I don't, I don't like to have to do work off my property either. <laughs> are there other comments? Debbie, are you only referring? Oh, sorry. Uh, no, no. Go ahead, go ahead, Hillary. I can wait. I'm... I was wondering, are you only referring to the parking area? Because it looks like the parking area is the piece that's going off the property. Right. Yeah. Okay. Correct. Okay. Correct. I just want to be sure. Um, are are these delineations of the fifty and hundred feet feet from a surveyor's plan, or did you just do this from something they're, else? They're from the surveyor's plan when I had my septic system designed. Okay, so your whole, uh, the walkway is between the 50 and 100, is that right? Um, let me just uh, pull that up again here. Sorry, I've been working all day and... It is. It okay, is. all right, all right, that was my question, thank you. Okay. And I agree with Debbie, no work should be done. We can't approve any work that's not on your property. Beautiful. I was very appreciative, by the way, of the um, DPW coming out um, to fill in some of the holes and to make for less dust because there are, um, there's Lackner Lake and Perkins Pond out there whenever there are, you know, serious rains and um, the whatever material is used, whatever people drive by blows dust up into the house. So that was good. Um, I also think this is a big improvement from what we saw last time um, and will allow drainage uh, and also allow you to walk barefoot down to where you want to walk. <laughs> <laughs> Very important, I hate shoes. <laughs> but that, that was, that's not our criteria for approving projects. <laughs> Are there other comments on the proposal? Because looks good to me. All right, could I, John Kumpler? Yeah, I, I, I'm, I like the proposal. I, I like the improvements, uh, the changes. Um, I'm not sure what you're going to do about your parking, given the fact that we, we can only approve for part of what you want to use for parking, for, for improvements on that. Um, have you any thoughts on that? Well, I am parking in that area now. Um, you know, as are my neighbors, you know, it, it seems that, um, you know, it's as if there were a part, an unofficial parking lane outside of the travel, you know, right away. Um, because there are uh, utility poles that define the travel lanes and um, the public right of way um, extends from those utility poles back toward my property. Mm -hmm. so you can't really drive there. Um, so they're used for both passing and for parking. Um, so, you know, I would just need to, you know, make whatever improvements there in terms of the um, tree roots. And um, if there are tree roots still sticking up in the public right of way, uh, I guess I could talk to the DPW um, you know, I don't like to ask the town to spend any money that they don't need to, especially in these times. But, um, you know, it's really just kind of sandy and, uh, you know, some roots there, so. Well, so long as you understand that you can make improvement, that we're only giving you permission to make improvements on your property. That's perfectly clear, clear and I have it written in black and white on my notes here. Okay. Not but I, 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 I'm, I'm ready to vote for this. Are there any other comments on the proposal? Could I have a motion, please? Um, I just have one question. Does this require, I guess it doesn't, natural heritage because this is a terrapin nesting area? You know, I did send in um, both on the original application and on the, um, uh, you know, continuance application just because I didn't know what to do because it was over Christmas holidays when I was yeah. preparing this. I sent to both of them. Um, I 
uh, got my return receipts back. Um, and on the original one for, uh, I, I got a, res a response from one of them, but not the other, but um, didn't get anything back on this one. Okay, Ms. Lackner, you'll need to get the um, green cards to Hillary. You can put them in the envelope, in the um, bins outside of the DPW in the conservation bin, just clearly mark what they are. No problem. And Hillary, do you have a copy of that letter? The National Heritage letter? No. So if there's a letter, she'll need a copy of that also. I will do that. I don't remember right now, and I, I don't want to go through all my, flip through my files right now and take your time, but um, I, like, I don't remember which of them responded to me, but I can get that. And Not in a, response, did they indicate that there was any problem with what you were proposing? Whichever one responded said there was no problem. Okay. <laughs> but I don't know which one it is um, until I go through my pile of papers here. Okay, as long as we have that, because we do see turtles walking down your road and yep. into your area. Yep. yep. All right, could I have a motion for Lackner 66 Hiawatha Road, map 28, parcel 178 for the RDA? I, I move that we approve the RDA contingent upon the Natural Heritage and Endangered Species Program signing off on this. Second. Um, I need a voice vote. Leon? Yes. Barbara? Yes. Ben? Yes. John Cumbler? Yes. Mike Fisher? Recuse. Okay, uh, I don't see um, John Portnoy anymore. Am I missing him? I'm, I'm in the fog. He's oh, up here in the top box. <laughs> He's there. John, how do you Still vote? here. And you vote? Yes. Okay, and Debbie Freeman, yes. I apologize. All right, so you're all set. You just need to turn those documents into Hillary. Will do, thank you very much. Okay, the next, the next matter is Courier 1015 Chequesset Neck Road, map 19, parcel 93, an RDA to install ground mount seven two by 10 forms, 12 inches wide and nine feet long for 30 solar panels. This is a continued matter. Is this anyone this application has been withdrawn um, okay. by the applicant. And um, Debbie, after you vote on that, can we just run through the other hearings that have been continued? Because I see folks on here waiting for things that aren't going to happen. So there's no sense in keeping them. Right. And for Lackner, you guys have to uh, sign form two. OK, thank you, Barbara. All right. Hillary, what vote do we need for Courier? I'm just to withdraw without prejudice. Okay, could I have a motion to withdraw a courier without prejudice? So moved, John Cumbler. Is there a second? Leon seconds. Okay, I need a voice vote, Leon. Yes. John Portnoy. Yes. Barbara. Yes. Ben. Yes. John Cumbler. Yes. Mike Fisher. Yes. And Debbie Freeman, yes. Okay, then as I understand it, Hillary, um, Miller, 21st Avenue, map 30, parcel 122, an RDA for Vista pruning, has requested an indefinite continuance. Correct. Right. Holand trustee, 1440 Chequesset Neck Road, map 18, parcel 9, NOI, has been continued to February 3rd, 2021. Correct, except it's map 18, parcel 7. Oh, sorry, uh -oh. that's okay. All right, are there any other continuances that people should be aware That's of? That's all I have. Okay, so um, the next one is um, Buglione, Parker, current order, owner, 84 Springbrook Road, map 47, purple, parcel 28, a certificate of compliance. Is there anyone here for that? This is a Jason Ellis, um, Jason Ellis request for a certificate of compliance and the work was completed satisfactorily 
And we were out there because it was just for the upgrade of a septic system. So we need a motion to approve the certificate of compliance. Yes, so move, Barbara. Is there a second? Leon seconds. Okay, I need a voice vote. Leon? Yes. Bar um, Barbara? Yes. John Portnoy? Yes. Ben? Yes. John Cumbler? Yes. Mike Fisher? Yes. And Debbie Freeman? Yes. Form 8B. <laughs> Barbara, what was that form? 8B, Certificate of Compliance. So we have a Form 2 and a Form 8B. <laughs> OK, then we have um, Y40 or WE 40 Hiawatha Road, Map 28, Parcel 176, a Certificate of Compliance. Is anyone here for that? Hi, Damon Way is here. Hi. Hi, I'm sorry I bushed your, your name. That's okay, no worries. All right. Happy New Year, everyone. All right, so um, you have performed the work that was requested, including removing the paving stones? That's correct. I sent a before and after picture, and you're welcome to come by if you want to see what happened. I actually saw it was done. Very good, thank you. Yeah, I walk by there frequently, and I've noticed too. Um, Hillary, is there anything else that we need on um, way? Nope, you can go ahead and issue the certificate. All right, could I have a motion to issue the certificate of compliance? So move, Barbara. Is there a second? Second. Yeah, second. Blur. Okay, I need a voice vote. Mike Fisher. Recuse. John Cumbler. Yes. Ben. Yes. Barbara. Yes. John Portnoy? Yes. Leon? Yes. Debbie Freeman? Yes. And this is also Form 8B? Right, 8B. Can I, can can I ask a quick, couple quick quest, questions? Sure. Um, as you obviously noticed, I, I now have a copious supply of stones. <laughs> um, can I, do I need to submit a form if I want to put an edge around the driveway, single row of cobblestones and do you want me to submit something like that? Unfortunately, yes, because that's not what was on the approved plan. So we'd right. have to walk back through another form with you. Okay. Right. Okay. That's fine. I did. That's why I'm asking. I want to make sure I can process this time. Yes. Perfect. Okay. All right. Very good. And, it's, and we're okay with the garden. I know that wasn't mentioned on the form, right? Yes, no, the garden was fine, we said. Awesome. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, Cowles, 153rd Street, Map 40, Parcel 98, an RDA to install a shed. Is there anyone here for that? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Yep. Do, you, do you want to talk to us about your project, please? Sure. Um, we would like to install a 10 foot by 12 foot shed on our property. Um, as you can see, there's not a lot of good space for it. Um, we picked the location to really minimize the impact on other people's views through our property. Um, and it's, um, I think it should be pretty standard. Um, the only thing that we did want to do was to the doors, it's a double door that would open from the shed onto the walkway. And I was just looking for a three foot by six foot expansion of the walkway, basically with the same materials that you saw. You know, I was noticing that the walkway says sleep, but those are clearly bluestone. I, I just kept, use the same words without thinking about it from, um, from the previous uh, site plans that were submitted. So oh, I guess that's that's all that I have. You have any questions? Barbara, I think this is a modest proposal, and as long as the um, blue stones are separate to allow drainage, I think this is fine. 
Yep, we'll keep it the same as they were, as they are on the other parts of the walkway to right. match it. Does anybody Separate. else have further comment on this proposal? No. All right, could I have a motion then for Cal's? Uh, uh, so moved, Barbara. Uh, second. I'll second. I'll <laughs> we're, we're fighting about who's take, moving. Take, take your choice. I don't care. All right, I need a voice vote again. Leon? Yes. John Portnoy? Yes. Barbara? Yes. Ben? Yes. John Cumbler? Yes. Mike Fisher? Yes. And Debbie? Yes. You're all set. All right, thanks. That and was easy, huh? What firm is that? <laughs> <laughs> we, well, we, did, we did get lost looking for your house. I have to say, we ended up on the beach someplace, but we found it finally. Yeah, it's kind of a, yeah, it's way out there. Well, thank right. you guys. Okay. It's so a form two. Form two, sign it up. We wandered around in the snow. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> it's a beautiful day, let me say. Uh, okay, you're all set. All yeah. right, thank you. Sarah's in 15 Springline Drive, map 29, parcel 258, an RDA to construct a 10 by 12 foot shed. And I see that Miss Saracen is here. Hi there. We were out there and we saw that you had marked the area and that you had pulled it out of the buffer zone. And right. thank you very much. No problem. <laughs> um, are there any questions about this shed? I don't have any questions about the shed, but I just wanted to bring up that in a previous filing for this property for I think the deck and the stairs, we conditioned those things on reducing the mode area down by the edge of the wetland, and that doesn't appear to have been done. What do you, I don't know what you're talking about. What do you, I don't understand what you're referring to, reducing. Your lawn goes, your lawn goes down to the, to the wetland, correct? Okay. And last time when we talked about the previous project you brought before us, we conditioned the, the approval on reducing that lawn area, creating more of a, a buffer of unmowed lawn at the bottom of the hill. Okay, so what you're just saying not to mow that area? I guess I didn't understand that. Yeah, there was an area that was supposed to be left um, naturally vegetated and unmowed. Okay, I, I understand what you're saying. So from that, okay, I know exactly what you mean. I, I think I think that the when we had the discussion, it was that you were going to consult with the conservation agent and and um, Doug to delineate wh where exactly the wetland started and then not mow from there on. Okay. So, and, and that didn't happen because when we were there, we saw mowing all the way to the- Okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay. That, was, that was a condition of the, of the deck project. Okay. Got it. So we would ask that you consult and that you stop the mowing. Okay, no worries, that's easy. <laughs> So, so I, I would um, vote to approve this RDA on the condition, if we can condition an RDA. You can. That, that the owners consult with the, the department about where to, you know, the, the line to okay. stop the mowing. So gotcha. that they know, and it be, you know, delineated with, mm -hmm. I don't know, sticks or whatever. So they okay. know exactly yeah, that's where easy. that is. Yeah. No worries, that's easy. Okay, so. Um, that was your motion, Barbara? Yes, and it, it will be an RDA with conditions if that's appropriate, mm -hmm. I don't know. So, yeah. yes it is. And okay. I need a second to Barbara's motion. Second, Tumblr. Okay, so I need a voice vote, Mike. Recuse. John Cumbler. Yes. Ben. Yes. Barbara. Yes. John Portnoy. Yes. Leon. Yes. And Debbie, yes. And that is a form two? Yes, form two. Okay. We have a form professor. Oh, yes. <laughs> I'm into forms, that's what I like. <laughs> All right, so the next matter is Miller 21st Avenue. Thank you. Ma thank you. Okay. Map 30, okay. parcel 122, an RDA for Vista pruning. This has been continued indefinitely. So I need a motion to continue indefinitely. So moved, Michael. Is there a second? 
Second. John, second. Okay, I need a voice vote. Leon? Yes. John Portnoy? Yes. Barbara? Yes. Ben? Yes. John Cumbler? Yes. Mike Fisher? Yes. And Debbie? Yes. So that's all set. All right, the next matter is Miller 246 King Philip Road, Map 34, Parcel 12, a notice of intent, excavate along existing basement, construct, and this may be a typo, I don't know, but it says 116 feet by 14 foot bedroom. Is that correct? Or is it 11 and a half feet? It was 16, this is Steve Phillips of Geiger Phillips. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, excellent. Okay, it was 16 feet by 14 feet. Thank you. So there's just an extra one that jumped in there. 16 feet by 14 feet bedroom, reduce and rebuild existing deck, expand another deck, maintenance on beach boardwalk and stairs. Do you wanna talk us through your proposal? I, I, I just wanna stop here. It's not a bedroom, it's a study which is different than a bedroom because a bedroom has different codes. Okay. Is that correct? correct? Okay. Correct. So it's a study. It's not a bedroom. We're oh. not approving a bedroom, which we can't do anyway. Yeah, very good. <laughs> okay, this, this started out as uh, excavation along the uh, uh, basement wall on the water side so that um, the, the initial um, construction of the house, which I was not involved in. They mounted up sand in front of the, uh, uh, along the basement wall uh, with small windows into the lower level bedrooms. And the, uh, we we're asking that that uh, mounting of sand be removed so that we can install um, patio sliding doors into those lo lower level rooms to uh, add light and air and uh, be able just to walk right out of those uh, onto the boardwalk to like what exists there. Uh, and then the owner uh, mentioned that he, he uh, needed some office space and we did not, as you pointed out, could not add a bedroom. Uh, so my proposal was to add a study off the master bedroom. Uh, and that way uh, it would not be a bedroom, it would be a study, you would only access it through the bedroom. And then the item was brought up that there was a basement, outside basement door on that same end of the house. And the owner said, well, can we utilize that? And I said, well, I will bring it up to the Conservation Commission if the addition can be put on a basement. And um, it, it, it extends no further than the existing house. It, it is under the uh, 5,000 square foot threshold. Uh, we have a incredibly uh, very important 50 foot um, filter strip that is heavily, heavily vegetated and uh, very, very stable as you've probably seen. It was a nice day to be out there and taking a look at it. Uh, we obviously would not uh, impinge upon that filter strip at all. Uh, and then there was the uh, issue of the boardwalk and his beach stairs that are uh, in drastic need of uh, repair. Uh, and um, that's where we stand. Do members of the commission have comments, Leon? Uh, weren't you going to... Weren't you telling us this morning that you were going to be moving the stairway over to the center of the house? No, it no. Was not, that was not this project. Well, that was project. not this project. No. I mean, I think this is a, a reasonable project. This is Barbara speaking. Um, I would like to see a total calculation of square foot coverage of disturbed areas, including the walkways. Um, looks like the driveway is out of our jurisdiction. So it's just basically the house and the walkways that are, are in our jurisdiction. But I mean, I think this is a modest project. I don't have a lot of issues with it. Um, it is a terrapin nesting area. Maybe natural heritage has to weigh in. I, I, I actually protected a nest on this property a couple of I years did, ago. Uh, I did submit to natural heritage 
and uh, that uh, we were outside of an uh, endangered uh, species uh, habitat and uh, consulted with the, I think the 2017 uh, habitat map. Okay. And I do have that information. Okay. Um, for you, get, Barbara. Oh, that's please. okay. I guess I didn't report the nest to them. So they, <laughs> they, don't, they don't have a record of it, but it was okay. one, one nest. <laughs> um, in my proposal work uh, letter, proposed work outline letter, uh, I did note that the, uh, the existing house footprint was uh, uh, 943 square feet and the, uh, the addition is 224 square feet. Uh, the total um, uh, disturbed area, I mean, that's including the area that'll be revegetated yeah. was uh, 2,550 square feet. That included the house, the decks, uh, any excavation that we do, any, any revegetated area. Uh, all within the uh, uh, 100 foot uh, buffer zone. Okay, thank you. Hillary? John can go first, you gotta stand up first. I'm sorry. Um, just, just wanna ask, um, will, will all the excavated, excavated material be carried outside of a jurisdiction outside the 100 foot buffer? Uh, yes, John, it'll be carried uh, back toward the driveway uh, beyond the 100 foot buffer and uh, I can't tell you whether it will be deposited be beyond because there is an ext extensive area between the drive and the 100 foot buffer, you know, uh, whether it'll be carted off site or uh, just de deposited beyond the, um, and the, ac the actual excavated material is not, is not that great, but it'll be up beyond the 100 foot buffer, yes. Okay. Um, I was going to weigh in that this is one of the properties um, in town that has an older rock revetment that does not have a requirement for beach nourishment in perpetuity. So I would like the commission to consider a new condition for beach nourishment on this property. Um, can, can we ask the shellfish constable about that as well? Absolutely. All right. Nancy, are you still here? I don't see her still here, but I we... think she signed off. Well, I think could, Hillary, could we leave that open pending um, your your discussion of that with Nancy? Um, mm. You could, but we couldn't close out the hearing because we would need to contemplate the condition. Right. So I was going to ask um, if the applicant could calculate for us an amount of sand um, based on the size of the wall and the erosion rate at the property and get back to us with an amount and then we could evaluate that. And we could also have Nancy's opinion at that point. Exactly. That sounds good. That makes sense. I'll that be glad to, to discuss that with you, Hillary, and I'm sure uh, the, uh, the owner would be uh, very amicable to, uh, to doing that, so. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, okay. if, if we want to go ahead and continue, yeah, how, that's acceptable. Okay, is there a date that you had in mind? I think we could tackle that by our next meeting. It's it's not a difficult calculation by any stretch of the imagination. So February. Can you continue that to February third. Very good. Okay. Can I ask a question, Debbie. Sure. Um, is it just a straight standard? Title five septic system. There, I believe it is. Yes. Okay. Yeah, it's a um, it's one that's not that actually not that old, and it's really backed by the uh, uh, it's actually ac backed by the uh, uh, driveway. Um, so, yeah. Well, the uh, the leach field is backed by the driveway. Yes, right, right, is. which is what I thought was. Which is out of our jurisdiction. Which completely. is which is what I thought was the pertinent point. So, right. yes. Debbie, can I ask a question? Sure, Mike, go ahead. Okay, actually, two questions. One, three, I didn't see that the limit of one. one I can't hear you, Mike. Can't hear you. Uh, can't hear uh, you. I didn't see that the limit of one. We still can't hear you. How's now? Better. Okay, I didn't see that the limit well, I think your question was you didn't see that the limit of work was marked. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. So on the plan, we would need the limit of work marked. 
I believe that was on my uh, uh, plan of uh, December 2020. Um, work limit was uh, designated with a uh, line and, and a W, and uh, it was also noted in the key in the upper left corner. Okay. I'm working from a plan that's up on October, perhaps. I don't know. Uh, the second point is that there is really a number of things. Mike, okay. we can't hear you again. Oh, okay. I'll I'll scan that and uh, and and send it over and uh, so it can be distributed in case whatever reason it didn't make it to the to the packet, but it, it is noted on my plan. Uh, second, the uh, there are quite a number of trees that have been popped. Oh, Mike. Mike, you're saying something about trees. We can't hear the top. Yes, when the trees were. I'm sorry, we cannot hear you at all. All right, I'm going to offer like a section of my house for Mike to come over with his laptop and get into my internet so he can do these on Zoom. Yeah. Because he has some very valuable things to say, and this is very frustrating for him, I'm sure. And uh, for us. And for us yes. doing this on a phone. So I will do this offline and offer him, uh, you can come to, a uh, room in my house where I'll seclude off and he can do that. Um, my, he can come needs, here as well. Let, let, me try that, let me try it again. I've just uh, made some adjustments. So there are a number of trees that are topped. Was there ever a view easement approved or topping of trees? Hillary, do you know? I don't know. Um, I asked for the conservation files on the property because I wanted to get some insight into the size and height of the wall. Um, and all we had was the septic system file. So I don't. Can you see the, the trees along yeah. here? There's one, two, three, four, right just in this one picture. All right, so we will need information about whether or not a permit has been granted to allow the trimming of the trees. And we can discuss that at the continued hearing. Thank you. John, I have, I, I, as the applicant, I have no knowledge of that. Okay. John, John Cumler. Yeah, I'm, I'm, and it may be my fault, but I'm a little confused about which deck is being removed, how much space is being removed in the existing deck and how much is, is being added with the new deck um, along with the uh, general calculation of disturbed areas. I would like that specified. We can do that. Okay, so for the continuance, you'll have the specific measurements. Yes. Okay, is there anything further on this matter? Then I need a motion to continue Miller 246 New Phillip Road, map 34, parcel 12, until February 3rd, 2021. So, so second, Michael. All right, I need a voice vote. John Portnoy? Yes. Leon? Yes. Barbara? Yes. Ben? Yes. John Cumbler? Yes. Mike Fisher? Yes. And Debbie Freeman? Yes. So. That's been continued. That's form 8B. No, it's we're not signing anything. <laughs> OK. John, don't sign a thing. All right, great. <laughs> Love to not sign things. <laughs> All right. uh, I want to thank the commission. So uh, I'll uh, be talking to you. Thank yeah. you. Very good. Have a good evening. The next matter is Shadorovsky, 77 and 83 Samoset Avenue, map 28, parcels 114 and 113. A notice of intent, construct vinyl seawall. Is anyone here for that, please? Uh, yes, Charlie Agro here from uh, Coastal Engineering Company. And uh, before I get started, I want to thank the uh, commissioners for uh, taking the time to uh, meet with me on site today and to allow me to uh, join their site visit. I think it was uh, good to be able to discuss the project on site rather than uh, on paper through the computer screen. So I appreciate that opportunity. And uh, we appreciate uh, that you're there to, to walk us through that. Very helpful. In the snow. Well, it's, good, 
<laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, great weather we had today. Um, so yeah, I guess to uh, recap, the uh, the project has uh, uh, two aspects. Uh, we are going to reconstruct the concrete seawall uh, with uh, sheet piles that will be installed immediately seaward of the existing concrete wall. And uh, we're also proposing to reconstruct the beach access stairs, as we discussed on site today. Uh, the proposed, uh, so the existing concrete seawall, as we discussed, is not in great shape. Uh, as we uh, saw on site, there is uh, several areas where sand is uh, uh, eroded from the landward side of the wall and is washed through the cracks in the concrete seawall due to uh, voids and cracks in the concrete seawall. And after uh, you all left the site, I was able to take some pictures of the wall that I think would be helpful to uh, uh, bring up here. If Hillary, if I could share my screen. You should be able to. Okay, let me grab the pictures. All right, that's a good one. Share screen. Oh, wow. Oh, I'm sorry. Next it's time, sometimes. <laughs> oh, that's the problem. <laughs> Bless you. Okay. All right, we're getting it. It's coming through. There we go. Okay, so here's uh, here's a picture that I took from the uh, the side of the wall today, which I think will kind of help the. Uh, I know a couple questions came up about the uh, the rock scour that we're proposing on the uh, return of the wall, and then just to recap uh, <clears throat> some of the points that we discussed. Um, part of the proposal here is to uh, drive sheet piles from. Uh, the entirety across the entire uh, concrete wall that's on this particular property, uh, starting from about this corner here, and then going. I don't know if you guys can see my cursor. Uh, yeah. Can you yes. see the cursor? Yes. Okay, great. Yes. So it would start from about this corner here and wrap around the existing wall to about this point here, where then rather we would uh, uh, drop remove this portion of the concrete wall. And we'd install the sheet piles on a 45 degree return. So from about this point, we would go on a 45 degree angle to about this point here, where then it would turn 90 degrees into the bank in this uh, direction here, just to seal off uh, this corner of the wall now, which uh, as of right now, the uh, return of the concrete wall actually makes it to the coastal bank because uh, all of the uh, sand, some of the sand from the uh, uh, nourishment project last spring on the neighbor's property is still there. However, by the end of the winter, uh, this sand typically is uh, washed out, exposing the uh, rock revetment here, which then leaves a void space here. And that's when the uh, all this sediment behind the wall erodes at a really uh, accelerated rate, as we've seen uh, last year, leaving the, uh, the scoured area behind the wall. Um, so yeah, I think we uh, discussed a project in pretty good length today on site. So uh, I guess at this point, if there's any questions, I'd be uh, happy to answer them. Yeah, I have I'll, a question. Okay, I'll go first and then John. Okay. Um, and then me. <laughs> okay, and then Barbara. I am okay. not um, inclined to support moving the stairs to create further disturbance within the 50 foot buffer. Could the stairs be rebuilt in exactly the same location? Uh, uh, I, yeah, they, they could be uh, rebuilt in the same location. I think it was a uh, preference of the owners to install them in the new location. Okay, I'm uh, not inclined to uh, accept that portion of the proposal at all. And um, under our regulations, the stairs would need to be elevated the 18 inches. 
Right. Yes. The proposed stairs uh, are uh, right now proposed to be elevated 18 inches. I guess uh, one question I would have to that is uh, would the commission ha have any concerns with putting a, uh, a landing in the middle of the uh, stairs as proposed uh, just uh, for safety purposes while coming down the stairs if we were to move the stairs back to the original location? Um, I think I'd have to see it and see what size you're talking about. So right now we're proposing a four by eight foot landing. So it would be a, a similar stair configuration, just slid over uh, 30 feet to the existing uh, location. Um, I'm not thrilled with greater disturbance in the buff, in the 50 foot. Barbara. No, yeah, I, I think it's actually an improvement to move the stairs off the deck and then get rid of all the platforms and everything else that are, are currently in place and having a removable stair at the bottom. Um, There's already a removable stair at the bottom. Right, so um, you and I are, in, we're not sort of agreeing on this, but we can talk about that further and see if other commissioners have anything to add to that. I think that's a good point too, just in that the platform we were all standing on is uh, currently right on beach grade and then the stairs continue from that. If we, uh, by removing that platform and removing those low lying stairs and having the uh, proposed stairs come off the deck, that just naturally keeps them elevated up over the bank. And uh, we do also note on the plan that any disturbed areas of vegetation on the bank will need to be uh, replanted to restore the existing conditions of the bank. And uh, I think, you know, right now the bank is uh, uh, doing well. The vegetation on the bank is doing well. And I think uh, new beach grass or uh, another type of uh, uh, species of vegetation would do uh, very well on the bank are if replanted. Are you suggesting that you're going to remove the walkway? What, what I guess so, I'm... How, yeah. how much of it are you removing is what I'm trying to gather here. Yep. So on the plan, uh, there's a, a hatched area of that walkway, and it says existing 53 square foot timber walkway uh, to be removed and replant area. area. So that removal is 53 square feet, and we are proposing to add uh, 52 uh, square feet of landings. So it would basically be the amount of uh, uh, removal would basically re be replaced by the proposed uh, uh, landings as shown on the plan. And the landings would also be elevated above the beach grade as shown on the uh, cross section to allow uh, vegetation to grow underneath. So there's still stairs coming down from the deck on the easterly side connecting up with that wooden walkway. Uh, yes. Okay. Um, I have one other question, and that's about the return, and that's what the um, impact is going to be on the neighbor's property where they're currently um, doing sand renourishment. And I, I don't know about that. Yeah, so the current uh, effect of the 90 degree return is a negative one. Uh, as we've seen on, on several projects that we've uh, done similarly to this, uh, any 90 degree uh, return or 90 degree section of vertical wall that we propose is uh, when, it's, when we've gotten review from uh, Massachusetts Coastal Zone Management or other third party reviewers, uh, they have uh, suggested to go with a, uh, a 45 degree return to uh, lessen any 90 degree angles of the vertical face because the uh, 90 degree angles could uh, lead to end scour, which is why we've uh, incorporated this 45 degree return here. And uh, we've also, we're also proposing uh, rock scour in, just in, in the area in front of the uh, 45 degree return and, return, and the uh, 90 degree return and just to uh, tie in to the neighbor's rock revetment. I, if I still, do I still have my, uh, this picture? Is that yes. still shared with yeah, everyone? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so uh, as I said, the return, the 45 degree return would basically be a straight line from this point across. And then this void space here 
would be filled with similar rock as this rock revetment right along this line here. So it would basically tie in the two uh, uh, shore front protection systems better to uh, lessen uh, the effects of some of this end scour that we uh, currently have, again, which uh, worsens over time once this area of sand is eroded and it, al it uh, allows um, scour to take place at an accelerated rate here. Um, one more question about that return. Um, would it, is it feasible even to have sand renourishment on the neighbor's property just north of that return um, to protect them more from this project? Yes. Yeah, so this uh, particular property here, I believe this is the one you're talking about to the yes. north here, 83. Yeah. Yes. So annually they place, uh, uh, I believe it's 40 to 80 cubic yards of sand over their rock revetment. And it, it so uh, this sand that's still here over the rocks, that's basically what's left from last year's nourishment. I think mm -hmm. I can, you can even see it here. Uh, after Immediately after the sand was placed, it was about to where I was standing when I took this picture. And now you can see that since uh, since the mm -hmm. spring, it's been eroded. And I think it, you know, it might be a good idea to include uh, beach nourishment over to rock scour in this particular area here, a small amount of annual nourishment to coincide with uh, this annual project. Okay, has the, shell, has the shellfish department weighed in on this at all? I believe uh, Massachusetts Division of Marine Fisher, Fisheries wrote a letter since the proposed work is below mean high water. And they, again, just as a reminder, this project will uh, be requiring a chapter 91 license because right. there never was one. Right. And uh, we'll also be going through a MEPA review. So we'll be getting, uh, uh, if we haven't already gotten a comment letter from the Vision Marine Fisheries, we'll be getting one for the uh, MEPA review. Hillary, um, is this one of the projects where we've been sending them out to um, have them peer reviewed by an expert? So you could, you could send it out for peer review. Um, the other ones that we've sent, I don't believe they are subject to a Chapter 91 license or the MEPA review, but... It's foggy to me at the moment. I, I, think, I think this is getting a lot of reviews. And I mean, I hate these projects, but because this, this wall is already there, I'm looking for improvements that can be made because we can't just say you can't do it unless we have really good um, reasons for it. So I think we should, could optimize what we're asking for in here in terms of beach nourishment, where it can be based on some of the things that the town is doing as to where renourishment can make a big difference. Um, so, uh, and where the stairs can be and how they can be removed seasonally and where they can be stored seasonally instead of on the grass, you know, that, that we can condition this project. I, I don't know if we can legally not allow it to occur. Debbie, I still have a question. I have a question too. I didn't mean to ignore you. Yeah, no, that's okay. I know I didn't feel ignored. I just wanted to get it in. Yeah. Um, I'm glad this this photograph's still up. I'm I'm questioning questioning why we're maintaining this uh, concrete wall so far out onto the beach at this point in time. I um, understand from the plan and also from hearing Charlie out in the field, but the elevation of the beach to see where seaward of this concrete wall is already down to four to five feet and high tides in well fleet harbor are typically been six feet in recent months so we, we have no beach at high tide and it seems to me that the best thing to do here would be to move if you're going to put in vinyl sheet piling to remove the wall and put it back um, closer to the or against the, the toe of the coastal bank so that we have um, some beach. In fact, I would very have, have a very hard time voting for this project if that doesn't happen. If we don't move this uh, coastal engineering structure close to the coast, coast, closer to the coastal bank, I'm not sure. I don't understand why we're maintaining a concrete box that far out on the beach. 
Well, now one of the issues with this wall is that it uh, it joins a neighboring wall, and I can try to pull up a picture that shows it from that end. One of, one of the issues here, which we did uh, uh, include this with our alternatives analysis, and we did a pretty alternatives analysis before uh, even proposing uh, the design and removing uh, the concrete seawall. Here's a good picture that shows it. Removing the seawall and replacing it with the rock revetment was an alternative that was uh, uh, in out, analyzed here. And the, the big issue with doing that would be compromising the rest of this concrete wall here. There's really not a good point anywhere to uh, break this wall to uh, bring this, bring uh, uh, to install new sheet piles closer to the toe of the bank or to install a rock revetment in its place. Because if you did this, you would basically be recreating this situation that we have on the uh, neighboring property over here, over in this location as well, which could potentially uh, add further risk to this side of the wall at an accelerated rate. Because as you see in this picture, uh, as bad as this corner has been for a uh, scour behind the wall, this is also the area where the beach is its highest due to the rock groin. You can see that in this area here, just looking at the rack line, you can almost see the contours coming off this rock groin where this area is higher than the area of the beach out in this area and the area of the beach in front of the wall down this way and further down this wall keeps getting lower and lower as you go in this direction. So if we were to break this wall out in uh, any certain uh, location and reconstruct it as a uh, sheet pile wall closer to the bank or a rock wall, we'd be greatly, uh, we, we would again be leaving a 90 degree angle over here and leaving the wall at a risk of uh, increased scour, which would be detrimental for the neighbor's property and coastal bank um, in this case, obviously, the coastal bank is a highly protected resource area, but uh, so is the coastal bank for it, a flood protection that it provides. And uh, someone uh, on site today, one of the commissioners had asked if this is a VE zone. And the answer was yes, it's a VE zone up to elevation 29 feet, which is exactly where we were standing today as shown on the plan. So the current uh, wall configuration, as it might not be uh, um, um, visually uh, uh, aesthetic on the coastal beach, uh, this area, once the tide does recede, you can see in this picture here, there is a vast area of coastal beach in this area. And so there is a very healthy uh, area of coastal beach out in this location. And there's also a very healthy coastal bank that provides very good stabilization for the uh, upland areas, which is one of the key functions of a coastal bank from the Wetlands Protection Act. So it's my recommendation to uh, maintain the uh, vertical wall out here to protect these uh, the neighbors down in this direction. And as I stated, uh, as part of the proposal, we would be chipping away the existing concrete footing of the wall, which is already chipping away uh, naturally, just as, uh, as it degrades over time. And by removing this 90 degree return, and re so removing this whole portion of impact from the uh, from the beach, I think we're uh, improving the uh, situation that uh, currently exists in this area and uh, making the site better as well. So, looking into a, a future thinking uh, proposal here. Charlie, uh, Charlie, I'm sorry, I didn't. I didn't see the plan. The plan. Do, you have, do you have do you have fifty and hundred areas of disturbance marked on the plan? Oh, uh, we don't just because uh, all of the proposed work is in the zero to 50. Uh, the, we need the 50 that. Okay, we, we can we include that. Disturbed area and the new disturbed area. Okay, um, so the, the proposed work is all within the existing uh, disturbed footprint. Um, again, I mean, we show the, uh, the, 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 so, uh, so are you talking by disturbed by disturbance? What it, what do you uh, mean? Where the land has been altered within our jurisdiction, the house, the driveway, the decks, the walkways, anything, anything. So, are you looking for impact uh, uh, area calculations like impervious and 
because we usually don't show uh, in that type of information on a plan like this where all the work is proposed within the wetland resource area. Typically, that's included on a plan where all of the work may be in the zero to 50 or within a buffer area to the resource area. However, in this case, we're- Are there regulations require that, that you provide us with the total square feet of disturbance within our protected area? And I believe, so I believe we we do include uh, area calculations then linear footage of the uh, coastal bank on the notice of intent application, is that right? They're looking for the, the square footage of the house, the walkways, the stairs, and the wall. Right, but there's we, we're not proposing any work to the house. It doesn't and the, matter. We need the historically and what you're proposing. That's just what on, we need. Just on the plot plan for the deed to... to uh, I have one other question. Um, John, uh, this was intriguing to me because I didn't think about it. John Portner proposed moving that... that uh, plastic wall back, couldn't you have a return on the south side similar to the north side that wouldn't impact the neighbors and move that back? I'm just, it's just a question. I'm not an engineer. I don't know about the feasibility of this, but it seems to me well, if you're proposing that on the north, you could propose it on the south and move that whole wall back uh, a bit. Someone else has their hand raised. Yeah, Debbie? Yes, John. Um, in looking at the plan uh, and the picture here, the neighbor's um, wall juts in at, to the property line, basically to the property line. Then the, the uh, applicant's wall sticks back out into the beach um, and then goes parallel and then there's going to be the cutoff. It seems to me that they could start their wall at the property line where the neighbor's wall comes in and then diagonally move it across to the, the north end of the property, uh, eliminating a lot of that part of the wall that sticks, not a lot, but some of the wall that sticks out into the beach. It would certainly help address some of, not completely, some of John's point, uh, but not endanger the neighbor's uh, wall with more uh, uh, erosion. And my second point, just while I have you, is the existing staircase, and I understand why we want to get rid of that uh, for a lot of reasons, and the new staircase, it seems, is, a, is, is an improvement. I don't understand why the walkway, the break, in the new stairway has to be eight feet wide. Why not just make a four by four foot break, uh, which requires less disturbance of, of the, uh, you know, and less disturbed area, not by much, but some. But my bigger concern is, can't we move the wall from the property line to the south to diagonally across to where it links up to the property to the north? I'm trying to, I'm looking at the plans here and trying to visualize it. Uh, I guess, again, my biggest concern, so I'm, I'm looking again at this picture, my biggest concern with cutting uh, the wall here. So I guess you're saying to cut the wall here. And then no, do I'm something. saying join the wall there and then diagonally move the wall across from that point straight across. I, I would have to I would have to take a little time to consider that uh, again at this point with with something like this uh, usually our uh, recommended approach is to uh, uh, work seaward of the existing wall and again working as closely as we can to it uh, just to maintain that wall and to reinforce it to uh, better protect the wall to the, to the side of it now I guess my you know just just thinking about it off the top of my head right here uh if there's any elevation change between a wall right here to uh a rock revetment or to a, another steel sheet pile wall or not a steel a sheet pile wall uh that, that comes in from behind it 
uh, again, it would, you know, potentially cause a, uh, a void space in here. I guess if there was a way to connect the wall uh, behind the wall, I mean, I, I guess it could be a possibility. But uh, again, I, you know, I, I don't know what the uh, what the gain is here, except for uh, a couple feet on the coastal beach here, which, uh, again, we're already uh, removing uh, this area here uh, to gain some of that square footage back. A couple of feet is a couple of feet. I also wanted to um, ask about, um, we can't permit any structured further, further seawood, right? Correct. Except maintenance right? of an existing structure, right? Right. We, we can't permit anything further seawood of something that's already there. Right. And I'll bring up a picture of, the, uh, of a side view of the wall here. So here's what I mean in the uh, cracked concrete footing that's already protruding out from the wall. Our proposal would include uh, chipping that away and removing that and then driving the sheet so that the, okay. uh, the inner part of the flute of the sheet is uh, abutting and uh, immediately adjacent to the wall here. So we would actually be removing square feet from the coastal beach right. over the entire sh stretch of the wall. Thank you for reminding me of that. Thank you. Um, I see Nancy Chavetta has her hand up and Hillary has her hand up. So Hillary, why don't you go first and then I'll call on Nancy. I know we've talked about it <laughs> on the phone and I heard you talk about it tonight, but I still have a few concerns about the vert put installing the vertical wall seaward of this concrete wall in the velocity zone. I just, I feel like um, in the past DEP has actually appealed some of our orders where we went forth and permitted this. And I know that they will look at the order when we issue it, but I, I feel like I need to hear again, maybe this will be the third or fourth time you're saying it, but why the rock revetment up tight against the bank in line with one of the neighbors and sort of meeting the other neighbor isn't a feasible option. Again, it has to do with the, uh, the effects on the neighboring property. So and this is the uh, property to the southeast to the southeast correct now uh this wall when it was originally built was uh built so it was not attached to the uh, neighboring wall and wasn't in line with the neighboring wall so when the neighbors did a similar project it was uh not quite as uh, uh as much of a uh, uh, significant uh, scenario as we have now and this is also the area where the beach is higher uh, because it uh, receives sediment from the rock groin. Uh, down in this area here, the uh, reveal, so the distance from the top of the wall to the beach is a lot higher than in this area here. So if we were to somewhere on our property, uh, uh, basically remove this wall, uh, extend a return uh, this way, which again would be, it would have to be a sharp angle because the neighbors don't really need to do any work on their concrete wall now. Their, their wall is fine uh, until we start doing anything on this wall. So we'd have to do you know, some kind of return here to support the wall, support this retained fill behind it. And then by constructing that rock revetment, we're still creating uh, a, a void here between the two walls. If you extended this, and did a uh, again a similar hybrid solution to what you have over here it could be a, a possibility but one of the other concerns that uh i am just thinking of now is the design of this concrete wall it's basically a zigzagging wall that uh each point of the zigzag bounces off the edge of the footing so there's a rectangular footing that basically connects this point to that point and then this point to the next zigzag point I know that's kind of uh, a difficult concept to visualize here. We've got, uh, we actually did the license plans and the design of this wall for the neighboring properties and the properties going to the, uh, to the south direction. So by, we're not just removing the, the zigzagging wall, we'd have to address, address the footing as well. And by cutting into that footing, we could be compromising the wall uh, on the neighboring property, which uh, we can't do. But you're intending to pound 10 feet into the, the beach to put up the new wall. Is that correct? Yes. And uh, prior to driving the sheet piles, we would uh, uh, we would instruct the contractor to uh, uh, pre-drill 
or pre-excavate the uh, area, the, the beach where the sheet piles are going to go in. And uh, in similar locations, such as a uh, pr project we're doing in P-Town, these uh, vinyl sheet piles go into the ground actually pretty easily here. And I'm anticipating that uh, this site, they should go in very easily because I don't see there being any uh, stone along the uh, footing of this existing wall here. Um, Nancy has had her hand up. Nancy. Hi. Um, so I haven't received anything from the state about this, and usually they will contact me. So I'm hoping I do hear from them. Um, I'm my biggest question. I mean, I think everybody's addressing a lot of the concerns, but why are we choosing plastic when we're trying to, you know, limit the amount of plastic? I know it's vinyl, but that, that you know, over time, this is going to degrade and it's going to go out into our estuaries and into the harbor. Um, so I'm just curious, of, like, can't we do something with that's more natural, like stone? Well, I think doing the, uh, again, there, I, uh, I think I address why we can't do, the, uh, do a rock revetment, why that's not our preferred alternative here. I think the plastic material is actually... Uh, probably the best as far as uh, um, not being not not degrading or rusting or chipping away and, and uh, you know polluting the nearby areas if you do a, a steel wall the steel will eventually rust and chip away and then you have you know rusted steel that flows into the water body the uh, this vinyl material doesn't degrade over time and uh, so I think that's uh, uh, probably one of the more beneficial uh, reasons to use a vinyl rather than a steel or uh, another type of material. I don't know of any other type of uh, uh, environmentally uh, friendly material that the sheet piles are made of here. Uh, I, I definitely don't either. I just, you know, I, I, I see what I see when I'm driving on the flats and I'm, I'm going to assume, uh, given what I've heard tonight, that there's going to be extensive review um, regarding the beach renourishment and how that sand travels and what it might do. That's correct. I think any uh, sand nourishment placed in front of the wall here, I would think would be very minimal. Again, I think uh, the neighboring property uh, places, it's either 40 or 80 cubic yards a year. So if that's 40 or 80 cubic yards over their entire stretch of rock revetment, which is about 80 feet wide, we're looking at like a 10 foot wide area here. So, if any nourishment would be uh, required uh, or requested by the commission, it would likely be uh, 10 cubic yards, if not less, based on the, uh, the erosion transects here. So very minimal, if not even negligible, and uh, may not even be worth the effort, even unless the neighbor was doing a nourishment property or project anyway. I think, and, uh, I and think just, Nancy has an excellent point about the vinyl. We don't know how stable it is. Uh, we're already seeing plastics, microplastics, everything in our oceans. I think we need to know how stable this is and what happens over time with this vinyl material. Uh, rust is one thing we can sort of understand how, how that degrades and how that gets into the environment, but plastic is a big issue. So, um, I hadn't even considered that point, and thank you, Nancy, for bringing it up. But I think we need to have an assessment of how this, how stable this is, and how it degrades over time, and what the impact is going to be on our harbor. John. Yeah, I think we're going around in circles, in a sense, um, and I think we should ask either, or the, the applicant should either ask for a vote or the alternative you should go back and rethink the project, particularly the comments that John made and, and I reinforce uh, the points that Barbara made and, the, and, the, um, and, and Hillary's points. I think a rethinking of this project would be in your interest and in the owner's interest, rather than have us go over and over again the same things. Um, you can ask for a vote, but that's your choice. My feeling right now, I would like to see a, an alternative, a serious consideration of an alternative project that is less, uh, that, that retreats back closer to the coastal bank. How you do it, that's in your, uh, 
responsibility, but I would like to see something, something else at this point. Again, you can request a vote, but I, at this point, I'd have to vote against this. And, and I, I, I appreciate that uh, input there. And I guess at that point, at this point, that may be the uh, direction to go to uh, uh, take another closer a look at trying to uh, reduce the footprint of the wall, which again, uh, I think it will be difficult to do here. I'm just trying, and, and I mean, at this point too, to weigh in the, uh, the, the options here, as far as the material is concerned, uh, we, we, the concrete that's there now that's, that's falling apart and uh, chipping into the beach and uh, concrete, one of them, you know, the, the key ingredients to concrete is calcium and there's all sorts of other nutrients in there that uh, can cause pollutants as well. So I think, you uh, know- But that's get, good for oysters. Calcium right. yeah, good. Yeah, it is good for yeah, oysters. Well, good for shellfish. that's why well fleet oysters are so good. So we can do a new thing. <laughs> oh, I guess that's a good thing to know. I did not know that. Um, so I guess that is uh, something that I will uh, go back to the drawing board here. And uh, then just to reiterate the point too, that this proposed project will be requiring a MEPA review. So a review by uh, Massachusetts Coastal Zone Management Group, the EPA, the Army Corps of Engineers. And uh, so maybe uh, that's, I guess, another thing to consider as well with uh, this proposal as we move forward. Can I ask one more question? Sure. Um, the wall on the Voulier property, you say that one's in good shape? Um, so it appears to be in uh, good structural condition. The footing has become exposed during the uh, winter time as the beach drops out. And I don't know exactly how deep that footing goes, but as that footing gets exposed over time, then uh, uh, it could, uh, the, the, the wall will lose, start to lose stability and could start leaning forward and breaking yeah. apart. And it's another I good. I, I guess my thought is that perhaps a conversation from homeowner to neighbor might be beneficial as well. If it looks like that seawall is gonna go south in the next five years or so, um, you know, it might be worth having that discussion with the neighbor too. Yeah, it's hard to say because I mean, that wall is in good shape. It's uh, It's been there, I think since the seventies is when a lot of those zigzagging walls went in. Yeah. And uh, again, um, since it's already in good shape, uh, doing something to uh, uh, degrade the condition of the wall is uh, could be detrimental to the coastal bank and all of this retained sediment here. That's a protection for the coastal bank. And the reason why there's this such nice vegetation here uh, could all wash out as this wall uh, falls apart. So what we're trying to do is maintain the existing condition of the wall here, which is maintaining the existing condition of the beach and protecting the upland areas. I'm just thinking if, if the footing's not holding on the neighboring property, they're going to have to do something. And they don't have a beach nourishment uh, requirement there. So just a thought to have a discussion. Yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I will uh, consider it. I'll, re I'll see if they want to reach out to their neighbors. All right. So <clears throat> I take it you're going to want a continuance to consider this and how long would you like? Uh, if we can continue, when, when's the next hearing? Is it two weeks from now? Yeah. If we can continue to the next hearing, I think that would be great. Okay. So, two to three. <laughs> you think that'll give you enough time? I think so. Okay. Maybe can I just, can I just uh, second something that Barbara said? If sure. you're talking to the owner, could you tell them not to store the removable stairs on the vegetation? Yes, I, I will bring that up. Yeah, both sets of stairs, <laughs> I'll ask them to uh, store it. You know, the one reason why it may even be there is uh, if the uh, water is overtopped the uh, beach, maybe the uh, stair, you could have moved the stairs. And uh, so the water may have done that. And uh, so I, I can ask them to uh, move it to the sandy areas and to try to fix it to the sandy areas better. I think they, uh, they're they somewhat elderly people. So uh, I, those stairs are pretty heavy. I picked them up today. And uh, so I don't think they're gonna be able to move them back off the beach completely, but. 
the I can ask them to move it on the area of the sand. The other thing is we're requiring now that any stairs, especially movable stairs, have identifiers on them so that if they wash away, we can identify whose stairs they are and get them back. Okay, I will let them know about that as well. Okay, so I need a motion to continue, Shadorovsky. Uh, I so move, John Cumbler. Is there a second? Barbara. Second. Okay, I need a vote. Leon? Yes. Barbara? Yes. Ben? Yes. John Cumbler? Yes. Mike Fisher? Yes. John Portnoy? Yes. And Debbie, yes. Okay, so you're all set with your continuance. All righty, thank you all. Is that a form uh, 8B? No forms. No, no forms. On a don't, don't sign a thing. Okay, okay. <laughs> all right, and the last matter, 140 Chequesset Neck Road, map 18, parcel nine, a notice of intent to install three sand-filled quar envelopes along the toe of the eroding coastal bank. This is a notice of intent from a prior emergency certi certification. And it's my understanding that they've requested that this be continued until February 3rd, 2021. Is that correct, Hillary? That is correct. We received an email from Ben Zender today at 2.52, copy to his team requesting the continuance. All right, could I have a motion to continue this, please? So moved. Second, Michael. Okay, um, I need a voice vote. Michael? Yes. John Portnoy? Yes. John Cumbler? Yes. Ben? Yes. Barbara? Yes. Leon? Yes. And Debbie? Yes. Um, I note that we have a lot of people here in the audience. I don't know if they were here for a specific matter um, or if they're just interested citizens watching. Potential commissioners, maybe. I love that thought. <laughs> yeah, I think I think they're, they're, they're dropping out of that potential, but just what? <laughs> no, I came here. No, I came here because I was so bored with home. But actually, I live on Indian Neck, and I was essentially here to find out about uh, the proposals for Indian Neck. And then, of course, many of the things that you're talking about are right around my corner. So I'm interested in just listening to what you have to say. And Hillary, I'll be talking to you later. OK, bye. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, yeah, I'm, is, oh, uh, my, name is, my name is Sim Simcoe Weller. Um, I'm in a butter um, on Chequesset Neck Road. I'm at 1440 Chequesset Neck Road. Well, and I just attending to uh, participate in the discussion, which was just um, obviously continued until February 3rd. So yeah. thank you. Yeah. We're sorry about that. We just found out ourselves at the last minute. No, that's OK. That's OK. OK, could I ask a quick question? Sure. Uh, I was just wondering, um, I, uh, the, it looks like the three sand-filled quar envelopes have been already um installed on the premises yes. is that mm -hmm. right what yes. this was this was a special proceeding this was an emergency certification that they filed which um we determined was in fact an emergency and we said go ahead and then they have to come back with a notice of intent to um continue that's good for 30 days I so see. that's why it, it's already there and you the, can bring up issues at that point is the continuance though relating to what was already done or is it relating to the um, the uh, interest to install a rock revetment on, on site? No, this is, this is just what was already done. The rock That's revetment right. will be coming back to us, I believe sometime in February, but we don't have that paperwork yet. Okay, thank um, you. If you want to tune in, Hillary, you can get informed as to when that that will be scheduled. Thank you. Okay. Is there anyone else? Yep. I just wanted to jump in and say thank you to everybody. Um, and I think that these these meetings are actually 
um, really making things accessible to a lot of people because you know I'm in Connecticut and I would have had a hard time coming up there for an in-person meeting so you know and it's it's very informative but I I hope that post pandemic maybe these meetings continue this way I don't know if they will or not but it's um what's that I said I don't know I don't yes. know whether we could do them you know, in person and with a Zoom component. I don't know what we will do. Okay. We anyway, have had, we've had some, uh, some discussion about having them actually videotaped, but yeah. that wouldn't be real time. It would be after the fact. Okay. But I can say that it really improves accessibility for, you know, for people in general to have them yeah. like this. Yeah, one advantage of COVID, right? Yeah, one, <laughs> <laughs> only one. <laughs> All right, so I stuck around to say thank you to you guys. And thank you very much. Thank you. Um, anyone else? Okay, then I'll entertain a motion to adjourn, please. Yes, I'd move right now. <laughs> Second. All right, I just need the last voice vote, I promise. Leon. Yes. Barbara. Yes. Ben with his hat on, ready to go. <laughs> John Cumler. Yes. Mike Fisher. Yes. John Portnoy. John Portnoy? Yes. Yes. <laughs> and Debbie Freeman, yes. Goodbye, you guys. Thank you. Right. Thank you, Debbie. Thank, Thank you. you. See you soon. Yeah. <laughs>